Hey guys, how's it going? Um, yes, I am actually playing Camille for once in my life. And I'm going to warn you. I'm going to warn you. I'm not the best Camille player. I'm not Dark Breaker. I'm not Hell's Devil. Those guys are absolutely poggers at Camille. Um, I need work. But what I'm going to show you today is a game where I learned a lot playing Camille whilst actually playing her. Um, just to give you context, I'm going to quickly show you something. This is my most played, okay? Um... Lots of lots of supports. Can you see Camille on this list? All the way down to 14 games of Darius. Uh, I don't play Camille that often, but I'm learning to play her. Uh, and this is what this video is about. I've done the, the giveaway for the, uh, the April draw, by the way. So if you entered into the April draw, which is 10 skins that I'm giving away, or rather 10 prizes of 1,000 wild cores or less, um, your username will be in the pinned comment down below if you won. If you have won, I'll be reaching out to you to give you your prize throughout this month. So make sure that you look in your uh, YouTube comment uh, notifications or if I have you on Discord or on social media, uh, I'll try and find you through those methods as well. So just make sure you look out for a message from me so I can give you your prize. If you want to join the May giveaway, we are doing that throughout May. Just make sure you like, comment and subscribe on any video that you see in May and it'll give you a chance to enter. The more videos you comment on, the better your chances of winning. And also, of course, Thank you to G2A for sponsoring the channel. There is a reference link in the description below. Uh, right, so Camille build. This is a, a kind of a the ethos of the Camille build that I went for. When you play Camille, absolutely 100% of the time, your first item needs to be Triforce. There is no other first item that really works on Camille. Triforce is the best item for her by a country mile, and that's because she makes such good use of the Sheen passive. After that, it really depends on what you need. A lot of high-level Camille players go for Death's Dance as their second item. I went for GA in this uh, in this game, but if you go for Triforce, uh, Death's Dance, Sterax Gauge, and GA, you're not going to go too far wrong. Um, in the game that you see me play, I went for a more defensive Camille build, but I'll explain that once I'm in the game. In terms of runes, Grasp of the Undying is probably the best rune for Camille overall. Um, Champion, because it gives you a little bit extra, uh, uh, sort of extra push in the laning phase. Hunter Titan, and then Sweet Tooth for the sustain. And then you can either go Barrier, Flash, or Ignite Flash. Let's jump into the game. As I said, it's a bit of a cringy game. I didn't play perfectly. In fact, I played play pretty badly at times, but it's about the learning experience and what we can take from it that's important. So it was a very detailed analysis of how I played this Camille game, and hopefully you guys can learn from it too. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're into game now. This is going to be a very cringe game because I am not that good at Camille yet. I need a lot of practice. Um, I've only recently started picking up these more mechanically intensive champions like Camille and Fiora for the sole reason that I know that you guys like to see videos on them um, and I'm I'm practicing, okay? So there's going to be lots of moments here where you're like, that's cringe, but it's because I'm a support main and I'm learning to play these more mechanically intensive champions. However, I want to use that for good. I want to use my cringe moments for good. There are lots of things that I could have done better this game. We're going to highlight what I could have done better so that you guys can learn from it too. Um, so I'm putting myself out there playing not optimally. I didn't play badly, but I played not optimally in some circumstances so that we can learn from that together. So please don't be too harsh because this is very, very cr cringy and a little bit embarrassing for me. Um, I like to be able to play the best I can, but obviously we don't play amazing every single game. Um, but this is a game that had a lot of good Camille learning experiences in it for me as well. So reviewing this video is not only going to be good for me, but it's also going to be good for uh, you guys as well. Okay, so I've got my little drawing tool ready to go as well. Hello. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of things this game. I can tell you that. So we're going up into a matchup against Darius. This is a matchup that you should actually win as Camille. There are two reasons you can win it. The first of which is the ability that I just missed there, Leg Sweep. You definitely don't want to do this at the start of the laning phase, by the way. If Darius gets one stack on you at level one and you've taken Leg Sweep, you can't trade versus him. In fact, you shouldn't be looking to trade versus Darius at level one anyway. Realistically, the, the first time that you're going to want to trade with Darius is level three. Just ignore this. We hit all of those minions. Don't worry about what you're seeing on screen. The first time you want to trade with Darius is realistically level three. And until that point, that's what you want to be doing. Until that point, you want to just be going up and using leg sweep and trying to not get hit by any of his abilities at the same time. Once you get level three, you're going to unlock your hook shot which is going to allow you to trade effectively versus Darius pretty much all the time. The reason that we trade effectively versus Darius is because of this little thing that you can see hovering on his uh, his health bar. It's our shield. 
If we get a, a basic attack on him, we're going to get a physical damage shield. I have no idea what I did there, by the way. But Darius pulled me in. He wanted to abuse the fact that I used my hook shot, which was good of him. Uh, and there's no way that I can trade once I've missed my hook shot because those stacks, I am not going to win if he hits five of them. So I just basically run away immediately as the trade goes a little bit south. But overall, apart from me cocking up level one, it's not been the worst in the world. You can see I'm kind of getting used to Camille and how to CS on her right now. Big minion wave for me. So I don't think Darius is going to engage on me because there's too many minions, although he does. So this is what you want to do. Immediately, you want to use your hook shot. And then this is where I fecked up. That was so cringe. Okay. I would have won this trade if I realized that he had barrier. But I didn't realize he had barrier. Oh, I'm so annoyed at myself. I didn't think he had barrier. I wasn't looking. So I flashed on him thinking that I would just kill him. Even though we're just going to... Even though he clearly barriered before I flashed by about like 0 0.5 seconds before I flashed. I thought if I got an empowered precision protocol on him without the barrier, I was going to kill him. I mean, if you look at how much damage he takes from it, probably not. I, I, but he flashes on me. He has all of his stacks. He ends up killing me. This was very bad for my lane. Although I didn't use the ignite until later. So maybe I would have killed him. But this was very bad for my lane. Uh, because now he has a level advantage on me. Uh, and I can't really trade effectively versus him. I've also gone for Phage. Really, I should have gone for Sheen. So if you're going to make a first item choice on Camille and you're interested in trying to kill the enemy, you should always go for Sheen first, which you can see that Stuart has picked up on the Vi. You should always go for Sheen first because it, it basically it, it, uh, synergizes with your precision, precision protocol, which is your, your first ability. It synergizes with your first ability really nicely. Why does it synergize with your first ability really nicely? Well, I'll tell you. The first ability cast will give you Sheen proc. You then have to wait 1.5 seconds for the second ability cast on, on your first ability. And that will also give you a Sheen proc. So you can proc Sheen twice with one ability, which when you get it, makes you pretty much untradeable as a Camille. So you can get two Sheen procs with one ability, which is really, 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 really powerful. Um, so that's why Sheen is one of the best first items on Camille. And that's why Triforce is so ridiculously powerful on her, because obviously you get the empowered Sheen effect. So I really fecked up on this, by the way. I pushed the lane into Darius. Darius got a big minion wave just outside his turret. And what has he done with it? He's essentially frozen it. You can see here. He's basically frozen the minion wave, which is... I was so dumb to just let him get away with that. Uh, but I really wanted to go back and get my Sheen. So now you can see this, this hasn't this hasn't frozen properly for Darius, but what it has now allowed him to do is get a slow push. Uh, and that's essentially allowed him to um, zone me away from the minions. You can see, I don't want to get close to him because I probably don't win a fight right now. I don't win a fight, especially post level five, easily against the Darius. So I can't actually step up to the minions. So what is this What is this doing? It's denying me gold and experience. How could I have avoided this? Stayed in lane and tried to push it very effectively under the tower. You can see Darius is very, very keen to go for the trade against me. There is a reason that Darius went for the trade there. Um, the reason that Darius went for the trade is because look at this minion wave. This is going to push into this tower regardless. So Darius said the best thing for him to do, go for the engage. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does work, I kill him and I get, I get like he denies all these minions. So there was no reason not to go for the trade for Darius. Um, if he killed me, I lose all of these minions and my game is over. If he doesn't kill me, well, these, these minions were pushing to the turret anyway. So it is what it is, right? So really, really good stuff from Darius. Really, really good lane knowledge to know to go for that trade just then. Because if it had worked out, it would have got him a ridiculous lead that I would not have been able to recover from. However, what I'm doing is really sensible right now. I'm not fighting Darius. This is what some, this is people from Solo you can learn from this. When you take a bad early trade, don't make it worse. Do not make it worse. You, you need to be um, willing to sacrifice some early golden experience to essentially say, that's okay. It is okay to lose some early golden experience. Um, I can come back later on in the game. By fighting him, all I'm going to do is make it 10 times worse. So I'm just going to push this minion wave into tower. 
the ocean drake has spawned and i think i'm better served keeping darius in the lane than i am actually going to help with the ocean drake so what i'm doing right now is i'm essentially pushing that minion wave into the baron lane tower at every given opportunity because i do not want darius to go up here i want darius to stay here there's no way that Darius kills me 1v1 easily. The reason Darius is not going to kill me 1v1 easily is because I have my hook shot. So if Darius ever looks to engage, I just run away. And I know that's a really pussy way of playing the lane. Like, look at this. He's trying to go for the engage, and I just run away. He did a lot of damage, but it's fine. I'm happy to just sit back. I have my, my fruit are spawning relatively soon. You know, I, I just don't want to die to him. And by not dying to him, I'm not giving him any more resources in the lane. And the rest of the map, which is going pretty well for us right now, I'm not going to make their job harder. This is what we call playing to get carried. I am playing to get carried right now. Not that I can't come back later on into the game, but I'm just making sure that I'm not making it any worse. That one bad early trade, you know, I've kept it to a 600 gold lead for Darius. That's not bad. That's a relatively okay gold lead for, for a guy that got an early kill in the laning phase and has been able to zone me away from several minions. So I can I can tell that they're going for for uh, for Rift Herald right now, clearly. Darius walked into lane. We saw Rengar come mid and walk straight over. They're obviously going for Rift Herald at this stage in the time, which is okay. Um, we weren't in a position to contest it, so I didn't even want to bother. There was no, no I was going to achieve nothing by going to the Rift Herald. So I'm, again, I'm not stepping up too aggressively because I don't know where Rengar is. He could be in this side of the jungle here and he could very easily come and gank me with his ultimate. So what I'm doing is just playing a very safe laning phase. I don't want to get caught out by Rengar. I don't want Darius to just walk, walk up and kill me, even though he's just shown himself here. I have Stuart kind of like in the sidelines on the Vi. Um, we're going to see another really cringe moment from me here. So this was actually a good trade for me. Leg sweep into hook shot into first precision protocol into second precision protocol a lot of damage but i uh, i accidentally flash out of my ultimate as you can see it was a fat finger i didn't mean to hit flash i actually meant to hit ignite um i'm going to give you some context i was playing this in my bed at 11 o'clock at night um, and i just my big old fat thumb slapped flash instead of ignite however that did show you that i could effectively take trades versus darius one of the other problems that I have playing at home right now, because I have no internet, is this right here. I get constant like 500, 400 MS ping spikes, and I'm quite often playing at 150, 120 MS, which is actually really annoying. Um, and so that's why I have, I've only got about 40 ranked games this season, because I just haven't had the internet to be able to play effectively from home. The only place that I can play good wild rift right now is at my parents which is I'm at, which is where i'm at but i don't sleep here overnight i only come here from about 10 o'clock in the morning uh, and i usually have to leave to pick up rupert from nursery so yeah okay so we're keeping we're going to keep pushing this lane why are we going to keep pushing this lane i don't want darius to go anywhere else i really don't want darius to go anywhere else in this uh in this laning phase i the let the, the more that i can keep darius away from this side of the map the better it is for our team. The reason that the, the reason that's the case is that Darius is relatively strong, and if I can keep him here, just randomly pushing minions and and protecting his Baron Lane Tower, that gold lead that he got on me isn't going to mean diddly shit because he's not doing anything with it. So um, you're going to see me repeat this cycle over and over again. By the way, you're going to see me push the Baron Lane, and you're going to see me come and take the Krugs. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that. Uh, obviously, Stuart's not going to be able to clear all of his camps on the Vi all the time. Uh, and for me, like, I just want to make sure that I'm putting pressure on Darius and I'm still able to do something once I've pushed the wave. So I'm going to do this, push the wave, you know, go and clear the Krugs whenever possible. Now, Darius is trying to push that mid lane uh, Rift Herald down. So this is going to give me an opportunity to pick up at least the first plate on this tower. Rengar turns up. This is bad for me. Um... I use the hook shot and then the leg sweep to kind of get away. But watch this. Watch that. How quick is that? That's that's just illegal. So I use the I use the hexic ultimatum to try and avoid the damage and then I hook shot over the wall. But Darius flashes in. He has loads of stacks on me, so it's a very easy ultimate. Um, I could have maybe played that a little better. Maybe could have saved my hextech ultimatum for the tower, kept Darius locked in a little bit longer. But I think realistically, I got ganked. And with Rengar on the top, Rengar on that side of the map, my um my my, my uh, top side of the map have done really well so they've actually done really well here um infernal dragon is up as well they've killed the ad carry 
They're just about to kill the Rengar who tried to stand in the brush, which is really nice. Really good play from them overall. And killing the Rengar should allow them to get the... Um, should allow them to get the the, uh, the Infernal Drake for free. You can see they've killed four people. So there's no reason for me to go to Infernal Drake. Darius is not going to be able to, uh, to sort of uh, 1v4 that realistically. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to push the Baron lane again. Because Darius, Darius is showing himself, showed himself up here. So uh, I've got a little bit of time to be able to push this Baron lane in. Unfortunately, uh, because of that gank, Darius did a really good job uh, and ended up getting the first tower of the game. Uh, I probably don't have enough time to get any more plates on this uh, this this tower because you're going to see Darius turn up in just a minute. But oh no, I do. I get a plate, but I can't get the entire I, I can't get the entire tower. So Darius runs at me, doesn't quite find the engage this time around, and I leg sweep him away. Again, I'm playing super safe. I don't want to give Darius any extra edge in this in this matchup. And again, once more, you're going to see me go for the Krugs. There's nothing really else for me to do. So I think Darius knows that I'm here, by the way. Um, he, he kind of like turns up. I, I'd use my hook shot to get away from his decimate. Uh, but he did pull us back in. I used my Hextech ultimatum. And then I I, get, I kill him with the ignite. So we, we trade back onto the Darius who went a little bit over aggressive. I jump back into the fight and get a nice attack onto the Rengar who gets taken very low. I now have to wait. Like you can see, I'm waiting for these cooldowns. In a team fight, in a team fight, it's really important to wait for your hook shot and for your... Um, your leg sweep because otherwise you're just running at people and especially ranged champions that's never really a good idea so i'm forced to flash away from the ari here i don't want to go onto the jinx because i'm too low hp uh, and there's not really much else i can do in this fight so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to back away the best thing that i can do for everybody in this fight is go and regen some hp uh, and potentially just push out the baron lane which is what i'm doing right now so you know i got a good got a good engage onto the the darius and onto the rengar following that there wasn't really any extra that i could do and the best thing that i can do for my team is push up this baron lane now of course darius has respawned he showed himself in the mid lane he should be able to get that mid lane turret because diana is a little bit too weak to be able to stop it so darius did a really good job of just recognizing that the mid lane was going to be his priority and i can't really see anybody on the map uh, so i'm not going to take any risks i that that tower is about one basic attack from dying i don't need to take the risk to go and kill it now i can wait and come back to it in a little bit later. And you can see that I've picked up a lot of items now. Uh, I'm, I'm catching up in terms of gold. Um, Darius has obviously picked up quite a bit of gold here. But I'm catching up. You know, I'm keeping myself in a relatively competitive level. The problem that we're going to have now is, as I said, retreat. All of my team are grouping up around here. It looks like Blitzcrank gets pulled over the wall by Darius. And he ends up dying. That's not a good look for us. There isn't really anything that I can do in that fight. So the best case scenario for me is to try and push this uh, this Baron lane. But Darius, again, is making his way down. So I'm just going to take this. In fact, I'm not even going to take this. I'm going to back off. I'm going to ward. And I'm going to take the Krugs. Because again, I can't really risk fighting Darius, especially when I can't see anybody else on the map. So I'm just going to keep trying to funnel gold and also draw Darius away from doing anything useful. Um, he went over and pulled the Blitzcrank. My team just disrespected the Darius pull. Uh, but what we see here is Darius now catching Stuart in the blue buff. However, my team is able to react to this really nicely. So I Hextech ultimatum him to stop Stuart from getting stacked on. The Diana ultimate comes through. We sweep him down and he, get, he drops to the Varus. I dodged the charm with my hook shot and start doing as much damage as I can to the Alistair. I'm going to leg sweep both of these guys, but the Alistair is the only one that gets caught up in the slow. I wait for the charm to come out. And again, now I go aggressive onto the Ari. Have my precision protocol, do a load of damage. And I'm going to stop the recording right here, okay? What you're going to see now is something that is really useful to do with Camille when you're chasing down targets, especially ranged targets, and you want to look to burst them. I'm going to set up the first part of my first ability on this uh, this cannon minion, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you're going to see me hook shot and then use the second part of this on a target. So watch this. It's a really useful trick. First one, charging, 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 hook shot, empowered, insta-kill. Now, I die here, um, and I'm going to use Leg Sweep to slow the Rengar down. Luckily, Stuart comes in and trades two for one, and we get the mid lane turret in return. I call that a relatively successful trade. We played that team fight really nicely. I'm now two, three, and four. It's not quite so embarrassing and sad, <laughs> which is what I was playing through the, uh, through the early game. This has been a learning process, okay, this game. This game has been a learning process for me, all right? 
So you can see the, the, the third dragon in the game is going our way. No one can really contest it because the Rengar's dead. They're actually going to pull the Alistair over the wall as well. Um, he ends up flashing, but Stu goes over. Doesn't have his ultimate because I believe he used it in the last team fight. And I think he ends up dying to Stu there on the top side of the map. So Alistair just a little bit over aggressive. You can see that Darius has shown himself up there. He'll end up dying as well. Rengar does come in, but doesn't actually get doesn't actually get a lot of damage down. By the way, I don't think Rengar's that good, by the way. I, I, I'm, I've not been super impressed with Rengar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start pushing in this Baron lane, all right? So I'm going to start pushing this Baron lane. Again, you know, Camille is a really strong split pusher. What I want to do is I want to kind of want to draw attention down to this Baron lane. I feel relatively comfortable that I could fight the Darius at this point in time. But what I'm going to do instead is instead of getting into a fight, I'm actually just going to take away jungle. So whenever I push up, I'm going to see if there is a jungle camp available. And I'm just going to try and take away some jungle. I jump in. I do a lot of damage to the Rengar. Use the Hextech Ultimatum here. Um, but I don't want to tower dive. Use the leg sweep though and end up getting the kill. Darius steps up. Stun him. I have my Ignite available. But the rest of his team turns up as well. I have my I have my um, Sterax which saves me actually from the Darius' ult. I managed to somehow dodge away from the, the, uh, the Jinx ultimate. And pick up a load of healing which is really nice. So Darius has used his ultimate. Doesn't have it available. Um, I have no idea what the Alice is doing here. I think Stuart actually disconnected. Um... The Alistair, I think, was trying to go for a headbutt and put Stu into the middle of the fight, but he just ends up trolling. Not really sure why. Um, and we get, like, domination of their blue side jungle. As you can see here. Going really well for us. And we're going to end up getting another tower. I'm going to focus down this tower and try and push as much of this minion wave as possible. I don't really want to go aggressive into their base, so I just back out. And then we're just going to clear these last two minions and that's relatively easy now lots of pings coming out for baron three really important members are dead and rengar and darius have shown themselves on the top side of the map so with those three here we're in a relatively strong position to do the baron it's going down quickly camille takes baron really quickly as well um, as does vi and even though we lose the varus we end up doing a really good job and get the baron here and there's nothing that the enemy team can do about it in terms of itemization um, you can see that I've gone for Triforce into uh, GA into Sterax, which I think is a relatively standard item combination. Now I'm kind of thinking about what do I want to build. I actually end up building Bramble Vest, going for a more tank Camille. The other the other item that I would suggest here would be something like Death's Dance, because I don't really have much um, lifesteal. But I've gone for Bramble Vest and going for Thorn Mail. Why am I going for Thorn Mail on Camille? Well, they've got a Jinx, they've got a Darius, they've got a Rengar. They've got a lot of AD damage. So I'm thinking that actually, if I just go armor, I'm going to be a little bit tankier in these team fights versus the main threats, especially people who are in melee range. So I'm going to protect myself against Rengar. I'm going to protect myself against Darius. I'm going to protect myself against the Jinx as much as possible as well. You can see that I'm waiting for my opportunity, but Jinx just sniffs me out a little bit. And uh, I end up just pushing up with the Baron main. So look at the, look, they're all here. They're all here on this side of the map. And instead of me going to join them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pushing this Baron lane. And they now no longer can sit around the dragon. You can see that they're actually going to five try and five man me here. Like all of them rotate around to the Baron lane. Um, but that's okay. Like I'm just going to back off. My team can just do Elder Drake while I'm providing a threat and distraction. I have Baron. I can empower my minion waves. And, and like, if they don't want to lose an inhibitor, they have to deal with me. So even though they want to be threatening on this side of the map, they can't be because I'm just constantly pushing in this side lane. I'm constantly applying pressure. Look, Darius and Jinx have to come clear the wave. And I'm not going to go over to my team doing uh, Elder Dragon. I am just going to constantly push this wave. Again, they're trying to rotate over. I show myself. I go very aggressive on the lane. And Alistair is now making his way over, uh, over to me here. You see here, so Alistair came over to me, and I'm just going to back away. He actually helps me out. Thanks, Alistair. You're a, you're a lad. Now, even though we end up losing the fight around the Elder Dragon somehow, despite the man advantage, um, we get the Elder Dragon, which is the important thing at the end of this. Now, I didn't think that I could help that fight, so what I ended up doing instead was just taking away the blue buff, uh, and I'm just going to take away as many. Um, I'm going to take away as many camps as I can. Now, I see the the Rengar overextending here. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a tricky team fight, right? So, right, okay, my goal, my goal when engaging here is not the Jinx. Usually you'd think the Jinx. My goal is actually to go over here 
and kill the Rengar quickly. So kill the Rengar quickly. Then we can think about Jinx and Alistair. So that's my goal to start this team fight. So I jump over the wall. Rengar's there. Immediately Hextech ultimatum him. So he ends up dying. And I'm going to double leg sweep to slow them both down. Hook shot. Um, I meant to hit the Alistair, but we'll just say that that was intended. And again, keep the hook shots going. Trade into the Darius. I'm much stronger than the Darius at this stage in the game. He actually pulls me out of the second part of hook shot, which is super, super clever of him. But what I end up doing is just flashing onto the Jinx. So then I leg sweep to fade away, then go into another hook shot uh, to get onto the Darius and pop him into GA. And then I'm going to leg sweep, which he flashes out of really well. But then we go in and, and another pull, by the way. This Darius is super good, but luckily the Blitzcrank was there. And we end up getting four kills in the team fight. This, this was the point in the game where I was like, I kind of learned how to play Camille. The one thing that we can, the one thing that we need to go back and have a look at with that team fight though. Okay. The one thing that we need to go back and have a look at is watch how many times that I actually use my empowered Q. Okay, so counter. So we're we going to use it. We're going to use a normal Q or a normal first ability. Oh, that wasn't an empowered one. Although, to be, honest with, to be honest with you, that was just to try and get the kill. That wasn't empowered, so we didn't empower that one. <laughs> uh, I didn't have the time to use this empowered Q, even though I had it up and available. And we don't use this empowered Q either. I didn't use a single empowered Q in that team fight. Now, really, you should be looking to use empowered, uh, empowered first abilities as much as possible. Um, I felt like the one on Alistair was justified to get the kill. Probably could have looked to get one on the Darius a little better. I wasn't in a rush there. But yeah, we, we, we played that team fight really nicely. And that allowed us to end up getting this uh, this mid lane tower, as you can see here. So that was actually a really, really nice play from us. Um, unfortunately, the Diana goes a little bit too ham and kind of throws the game or throws the end of the game for us. Uh, but you can see Ping's coming out onto the Baron once more. Uh, this is going to be a really tricky one, though, because Jinx is about to respawn. Um, even though Darius is dead, they do have a lot of members of their team up and available. So watch this. Rengar, this is a really good thing to do versus any jungler as a Camille. If a jungler is trying to get onto the Baron, this is a really good thing to do. Just Hextech ultimate them away from the away from the Baron pit. Like, just keep them away from the Baron pit. You don't, they don't need to be near it. However, uh, unfortunately, even though we're in a really strong position here, watch this. We get jinxed. I'm going to blame Keys. Keys didn't stand in front of it, but yeah, we get jinxed, which is um, which is classic, really classic, and that delays the game a little further. In terms of itemization, I'm now full build, and I have gone for a Dead Man's Plate and a Thorn Mail. Why have I gone for Dead Man's Plate and Thorn Mail? Again, I'm not worried about the AP damage. I don't really care about Ari. I'm more concerned about the damage coming out from Rengar, Darius, and Jinx. So I'm just getting myself as much armor as possible. Um, and I think this is a relatively solid build. I went for Lifesteal Boots to give me some Lifesteal in my kit. I do think on reflection, I maybe could have like sacrificed the Dead Man's or the Thorn Mail um, and gone for uh, Death Dance and then picked up the Plated Steel Caps to protect me against armor. But it is what it is. So, again, I'm pushing up the Baron lane here. I'm trying to draw these guys into this lane so that my team can either push the top lane or push the mid lane. Um, they're going aggressive, though. I can see a team fight breaking out. Look at look at where the Jinx is positioned. I'm like, oh, this is a good opportunity for me for me to maybe get on the Jinx. So what I do is I jump in, but it's going to be the, the Rengar that's the first person available to kill. I get, I get stuck on the Jinx Chompers, but Jinx does step up straight away. I get charmed out of my... Uh, I get charmed out of my hook shot i got pulled out of my hook shot twice and charmed out of it once but we get the we get the final kill onto the jinx we get the final blow and that's enough for my team to go and end the game so throughout, throughout the course of this game throughout the course of this game we went from a complete complete camille idiot to someone that can actually play camille relatively well in a team fight so that was my that was my learning experience on camille i hope you saw some of the mistakes i made and you learned a little bit from it Again, I was the main th the main takeaways from this game. If you're if you're doing badly in lane, don't try and fight. Just stay back, clear the minion waves. You don't have to rotate to dragon. If they rotate, if the, if the enemy top laner or the baron laner rotates to dragon, you can try and take tower. I was constantly threatening tower, keeping Darius in my lane, knowing that he couldn't kill me one v one. 
Um, and then I just kept farming Krugs, farming waves, pushing waves into tower. And eventually I got to the point where my core items came online. I had GA, Sterex Gage and Triforce and I became really scary, like a really strong team fighter. So I played it safe and play, and just and, and, and made that and, and kind of created pressure in the Baron lane to keep Darius there. And then eventually, once I got strong enough, I was able to influence the game a little better. And as you can see, you know, with, with me and Blitzcrank had that two v four team fight. That's the point in the game where I got really, really strong. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. And uh, I I really enjoyed learning Camille here. Um, I think she's one of the strongest Baron laners in the game. So even if I can play her, you definitely can. Uh, and I, I you know I hope you guys have success. I'll see you soon.